Marshall Square Park is a public park built in 1826 with subsequent alterations. Application is to alter the paved pathway and landscape, landscape features. And uh, the purpose of the construction is to conserve and restore the foundation, the plaza, and the northwest landscape quad, including paths, small plazas, and fencing. And the cost is 5.8 million. Excuse me, sir. Um, as you're looking that way, so you can see people in the back. How does someone, listen, as a community resident, do you want to go Fifth Avenue, you want to walk the park? Do I have to sign up? Oh, yeah, sign up. Let me explain how it works. Yeah, yeah. we, yeah. we, um, I did sign up. I, I did sign up. Yeah, okay. So the will right. so give you presentation. And then the, the committee members will ask questions first, then we we'll open up to the public. Thank and then we we'll make a decision Thank you. afterwards. And you can call up. We miss you. I haven't seen you in years at this meeting. Well, once. I told you to be a public member 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Since Attic didn't square. That was a public member of the Attic. No, I've seen you, you since Attic didn't square. Right. 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 Okay. Begin. Washington Square Park. This is the um, original plan of Washington Square Park. It's actually in construction in 1827. It started in 1826 and completed in 1827. And um, what's really important about Washington Square Park is um, it's in a landmark district. And what's critical is some of the historic features in the park that remain today and that survived through time. And what the shaded lines and geometries mean of what survived a certain time period. Originally, the park was very English in a way. It was very, geome very geometric, very parallel to the streets, and very diagonal. And there was the fountain that, that predated the fountain today. This fountain was removed in 1869, but it was put here in 1827. And, but what's really critical is Washington Place bisect the park right in half, which it does today. And these diagonals come through each corner, which is a remnant of the 1827 plan. Also, the park um, was much more in a greener setting, and the fountain was centered on a very cross geometry, which is linear north, um, south, east, west. What these photographs and etchings actually do, makes the show closer to the sun. Remember, that there's etching here from the 1850s showing the perimeter bench treatment, the geometric um, patterns of the pavement, the fountain, the jet, now the fountain display, the fountain works, which actually works in the fountain today, that same type of display. But it's really very critical. It was never, never, truly never really truly parades grounds because the park always had <coughs> trees. There were small gatherings of troops, never truly what you see in some of these etchings. Those etchings are not real. It was more about if you talk to the Arabs, it's like, you know, impossible. Just from these photos and etchings. This is inside the park at that time period, which is it's the old NYU building. And it shows the permanent fence detail, the gates, and how the fence were. Also, the type of illumination, the historic light pole. And that's, um, building was removed um, turn of the century. And this is actually the perimeter sidewalks, which are blue <coughs> on the sidewalk on the granite curve, which is very typical of the parks of the early 1800s until the eight, late 1800s, with the um, wrought iron fence in that park and the type of finial. So you can actually see um, some of those geometries of the park. Did you see them? The blue stone paving on perimeter sidewalks are very typical. The blue stone sidewalks and that running bond pattern are also across the street today at Washington Square North. The next major reconstruction occurred started in 1867 with the 1870, a very typical um, important time period of landscape architecture, especially in New York City parks. This is a time period where Madison Square Park, Union Square Park, Tompkins Square <coughs> and Washington Square were redone that same exact year. Um, what was the biggest change in design was the road. The carriage drive came through, which took the park away from the general public. So what the park had were these quadrants of green space to the right and to the left. And this is also considered the Gardenesque period with um, Calvert Fox and Jacob Ray Mould who designed the fountain and everything, but it's more of the meandering kind of curvature of the geometries. What they also did in this time period is that they created identities to each community. Since the core of the park was taken away and became vehicular, these corners had different identities. And this kind of is where the Scrabble Plaza is today with that geometry and the Chess Plaza. This is, of course, modified, and this is modified as time went on. But what's really critical are, again, these points and how these circles were kind of part of the form for the drive and the carriage drive. 
And this is also the same time period um, of the existing fountain. This fountain was taken from Central Park from 59th Street, Fifth Avenue, and brought down <coughs> to Washington Square Park and placed in the middle of Carriage Drive. During that time period, you can see the aerial shots of the park. Um, you know, the Holly Monument was one of the first locations that became greener to the west, and that became green while the, the carriage drives and road that now is more hardscape. You can see from the aerials, this is going to the Florida place in Thompson Street. And that's how the park is used. And you can see that the hardscape in this location is kind of closed off the bollards. And that's an aerial shot from above. And you can just see that the park is really a hardscape from that time period, 1870, all the way until 1970, for about 100 years. It was what for 100 years? I'm sorry. A road park. park. Well, a hardscape, yeah, yeah. which is all the asphalt that you see in these yeah. areas. The, um, of course, now the um, arch came in 1889. The children's pop play came into the 1930s. These two entrances came into the 1930s and modifications to that one entrance, which is more oval in form. And again, some of the field houses were created in that location. You can see the green space behind the Holly Monument, which is really more of a kind of space versus, versus from what it is today. The next change occurred in 1969-1970, um, and that was a very important time period to the park because they took away the roadway and brought back the park. But a lot of the hardscapes, like for instance um, with the Arab Bowling Monument, this is very hard. Uh, a hardscape means a hard surface versus greenery. The Holly is more of a pinch point pathway which many people walk this way and kind of just feel like it's such a pinch point, walk that way, and actually this monument has been um, really deteriorated from pedestrians passing it constantly, and actually from dog urine, but the marble is a very soft stone. The Municipal Art Society spent about $90,000 on this <laughs> monument, and they tell us, please relocate in a safer location because of the abuse the monument gets, especially the back of it is solid, and gets, there's tons of graffiti on it, and it's hard to remove graffiti from marble. But at that time period, it was very much of the urban landscape. Like in 1969, you look at 6th Avenue, a lot of the plazas are submerged. Versus, so they played with elevation. So that's why you had a team plaza, which is a higher elevation. And they, what they did, they created a landscape. They contoured the grading towards away from the fountain and created these um, walls, which are great today because they create these little kind of environments. But the problem is they're 30 inches high, which is about the height of this table. So if you're old or young, you, really, you can't really jump on these walls unless you really have strong upper body. And I'll show you more details about some issues with ADA. But they also create steps heading into this, which today are now paved with asphalt with very steep ramps. Um, the other elements were now new buildings that were created in Washington Square, which were the complex with the maintenance building and bathroom. The um, asphalt mounds, which was used with additional play features in 1970, was to create play value for children between the ages of 6 and 12. We all know Chess Plaza, and now this is now Scrabble Plaza. The playground for all the children also came at this point, which is in the park today. And of course, that's the top playground. The little intrusions in the landscape were created by two adventures that kind of float in the, in the green space, which was also in the 1970s aesthetic. But what's great about this whole park was that um, are these walls, even though they don't really be code, and how the steps and the fountain work as an amphitheater in a great space of celebration of the Great Park. Hey. Hi. Do you have a picture of the uh, mound area? Yeah, right here. Yeah. You said there was, there was stuff on it? Yeah, there are things away from it. Climbing structures and poles that were taken away because it was a liability issue. This, this oh. became uns um, declared unsound. Uh -huh. And the mounds became areas for roller, um, not rollerbladers, but more rollerbladers and skateboarders, and that was closed off because of the safety concerns and that's and right now, what you have around these asphalt mounds, um, for the chess players, it's very difficult. It kind of creates an enclosure for the space. So it kind of drug people congregate in this location for visibility. But what's really more important is that the rats harvest in this location. You see rat holes around this entire piece of asphalt. And these people who come to play chess have a big problem with the constant rat problem that is created in that location. <coughs> you walk around the park today, you'll see large holes. Why did the rats come in Because it's such a big piece of asphalt. It it's totally rice. covered, and it keeps them warm. It's a big cover of the <coughs> park shed. And so below is a very protected space. Oh, so they, yeah, they just build under and they just kind of 
This is a really large We're state. still in the presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 The perimeter yeah. treatment of the park, oh, as you can okay. see. Sure. Uh, internally in the park, you have a lot of pipe rail, which is really used a lot from the 1870s until about the 1930s, 1940s. And gradually, the whole park system, these perimeter treatments around our parks have been removed. Um, Madison Square was one that was done recently. Tompkins Square was done about 10 years ago. All the squares in New York City gradually removed this type of fence treatment. So what's happening is you have turkey water and posts behind them to protect the vegetation and how the parks are um, more kind of secured at night during late night hours, like around 1 2 in the morning. Those are typical. So you mean people would like would, would walk over here and trample plants? Well, trample yeah, plants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very difficult to grow your, your perennials. You know, what happened back from 1870 until about 1940? Actually, you all know this. We grew up in New York City until 1970, 1980. There's no horticulture. What you had in New York City parks were trees, no shrubs, mm -hmm. and grass. That's right. You couldn't you can grow horticulture because you had pipe railing everywhere. George, mm -hmm. when were the uh, mounds? 1970. That was exactly. Yeah. Let's go into the current plan. It doesn't matter, does it? The current plan is the total reconstruction of the entire park. Um, all the drainage is shot in the park, the lighting is shot in the park. Utilities are shot. When you walk in the park at night, it's broken pavements, and when it rains, actually, this whole plaza is flooded. But what's really critical is to preserve those historic geometries. So as you look at the plan, everything from this whole corridor up to here is all intact of a historic landscape. That's where the old carriage drive came through including this whole location. Now these geometries change. Actually, what they do, they get closer to some of the original geometries that were in that location. So what you have is this, if you take a, actually that one plan from 1870, put the road right through here, you'll see how this whole geometry kind of came to life. Which is really very critical because um, it's really important to landmarks that we don't really change the those historic geometries, especially since this was farmland. Everything east of this was burial grounds. So we'd rather do some least, you know, construction for this location. Like the construction we're doing for this location on new drains and catch bases, and of course new um, pavement, new curves, and new light bulbs. Um, the center of the park is going to get reconstructed, and since all this is being ripped out, the pavements are in poor condition, and making it ADA, ADA acceptable, acceptable, accessible. That um, since we're ripping all this out, some people are saying, well, does it cost anything to relocate? Of course not. Since the arch came later, the fountain was here. It's about 22 feet off, and we're severing the arch onto the fountain. So from a distance, what you also have is this great view of the fountain and some water features in the space. It's also great for performances. When people are sitting in the corridor steps, they can also look through the arch and feel the great urban city. Right now, you're looking at the abutment of the arch, and you really can't see the streetscapes. So you kind of feel, unless you're really on the edge of that um, feature. So what's also nice is that we want to create those sitting environments, and I'll show you that as a blow-up. We also want to create more seating, and um, as you'll see, a plan on how that's done when it's when it's actually graded when it's graded flat. But what's really critical is how the Holly Monument works and how the Garibaldi Monument works. We've been working with groups that, that perform in these spaces, and what's really great about them is we create a secondary performance space, a performance space for the Garibaldi, performance space for Holly, a performance space right under the arch. So you can have performances and use as a great lawn, bring your blankets in, and, and use the grass. The intent is that we want people to utilize the grass. The main design change here is that the plaza right now has a dog run on one side, the raised team plaza on this side, and you have a pathway coming through here and actually an ashen enclosure of plant materials and shrubbery for this location. There's really no way a plaza to kind of lead onto the landscapes. What we want to do is have this open plaza and feel like the lawn is part of it. So you're lying on the grass here, there's no more dog run with a 30 inch chain link fence blocking it off. There's no more three foot retainage in this area of Team Plaza. Now you can spill onto these lawns. So the whole concept is to spill onto these lawns at the plaza. And bring it back up to gray, it feels like this great big space. You don't feel like there's a really large space of a hardscape versus green space. And that's the biggest um, design change to allow these green, green lawns, these great meadows, to be part of this. The circulation patterns, of course, still go to the Guardia place, which is really critical. The other change was how to create a better entrance for Thompson Street. Right now, there's no seating along Thompson Street when you enter the park. It's, it's kind of, you know, turning one way. The fountain's actually, the arch is here, the fountain's here, the entrance is there. So everything kind of turns that way. So they kind of create more seating in this location. The other thing is to create a better space for dog run by making the dog run the same size as the current dog run. Some of the concerns early on was the original design for the dog run were too linear and too long. 
And since this geometry path is not historic, it allows to fill the path more and make it more, more curvature, like the paths above. So it kind of creates this great fluid pavement. Do you also What's the composition of the dropper kind of the, the composition we have in that's phase two is yes. either a crushed stone or a gravel mixture with probably some type of um, mesh fencing on lighting, irrigation below it, and irrigation at night. So when, when it actually it is a drought in the summer or it gets really hot and has rained in two weeks or in three days, um, the odor would not be bad because what we'll have is right yeah, really awful and it'll be like a mesh system of, of you know, pipes that are wrapped with filter of fabric. So when it rains or it's washed out at night, it gets, it gets all collected into that system, into a drain system, into the city drain system. So this whole thing should be a lot better. The biggest problem right now is the dog runs right along here and very few people sit around these around this um, this plaza. Actually around the plaza of Washington Square, you only have benches along this side and this portion. There's no benches that backs them along this whole piece of the space. And what we're doing is putting benches around the whole crescent of the whole plaza. So people who want to sit there for longer periods of time and want to rest their backs can. People who want to just sit and perform, there's any backless um, slabs of granite that they can perform on and sit on. Lighting will be around the fountain, which I'll show you in detail. But the whole intent is to create more seating. Actually, these paths around the whole periphery of the park have no seating. And the intent is to create, create these as the garden spaces around the park. The, the areas that are kind of darkened are more the perennial beds, the hostas, the ferns, the plantings. So people who want to sit by the lush plantings can sit on the periphery as you approach closer to the great ones. And that happens around the entire park. Can I ask a question? Oh, I have a question. Go on. Just one question. <laughs> On the Holly Monument, up to the small playground, there was a road, a path, yes. which is removed. Yes. It, uh, it seemed like a rather convenient path because the other side has right. major activity. Yes. That so that's going to block people. Well, let me show you this okay. plan right here. And there it is. Yeah. This is a great location. I actually live on North Fifth Avenue, and I would go this way because the Holly Block, the pathway, is a very pinch point location. The new plan makes this space a double wide path system that leads you into the space, so there's really no reason, and there's nothing blocking it. The Holly Monument now is located to this location, protected. This becomes a very big plaza for performances. You can just create chairs or just sit along the space and have this, you know, you want to have a little jazz quartet, you can have it here. That's the intent, is to have these secondary spaces for performances. So it allows double circulation patterns to bring you through. So it allows you to remove this pattern because it's a great, uh, great one. Okay. Is this fountain that you're going to propose, is that going to be the dead center of the park? Yeah, practically. Yeah. Well, that it's, it's slightly off. Oh, it's center. 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 The whole park actually has no symmetry in the whole space. If you look at the whole park today, there's no balance between either side. Wasn't the balance park perspective? It was historically. And actually, in the 1870s, it was also a carriage drive. In both parks, it's very balanced. Yeah. In 1969, it became a balance. Let me just show you quickly. I'm sorry to go so slow, but I just don't Here's an important um, Image. This just shows, again, 1970, the steps that now are paved with asphalt. When you walk down, these are 45%. They're very steep. And that's the problem with the seating walls, your feet dangling on the walls. And so if you're really strong, if you're very useful, you can jump those walls and sit on those walls and enjoy the walls. But if you're older and younger, they're really quite difficult for people. The other problem with the, with the walls is that these retaining walls go three feet below grade. If you go to the park today, these are the last trees to leaf out. And they're really on decline. And you can see the dip the dive back on these branches, which is really kind of interesting. Every tree down the park is very green except the trees around town because they get no moisture and they're struggling and the tree roots are girdling. It means that these tree roots are strangling the trees because these, these go down three feet below the cross line. But what's really critical is that when you bring the, the um, elevations up to grade, you have this condition. It allows a person now to sit under these trees, which you really can't. You can just sit under the tree focusing the fountain. You can't sit focusing away from the park of the plaza. But it also creates it creates all the moisture now to go into the trees that are planted. It's not a retaining wall anymore. It's more like a garden bench wall. And these are 30 inches wide, so it allows large groups of people to accommodate in these corners or even in these large crescents for musicians and for the type of music. It's stone. It's granite. It's a hard granite. Uh, I have a question. Looking at that picture, mm -hmm. 
that just shows the art. Yeah, it does. There. That's uh, yeah. a micro, that's a, a Photoshop mistake. These are all like they are currently in. That should be reversed in that gun image. Or the R should be on that side to be correct. Yeah. Right. The Thank you. <laughs> but the whole intent, you can see they're all focusing inward like they are today. And that kind of creates your whole space. And everything is at grade. So if you're coming in with a mother's carriage or a wheelchair, you can come to the side without any problems with steps or ramps entering the space. The steps will be carved in stone, the cross section of the fountain. So you want the whole exact um, detail of what exists today. So this whole thing is still the amphitheater, the great celebration space in Washington Square Park. Um, the jets will be very much like we have today, with the side jets that are sometimes turned on, as you can see from here, which could be turned on either very high or very low, or depending if it's 100 degrees out, people want to be in the fountain. We sometimes turn those on when it's really hot for children and for other groups. So that's the, that's the fountain detail. The difference is that we're bringing back the historic urn, the Jacob Ray Molds. Actually, this is the restoration of Madison Square's um, fountain. Jacob Ray Mold, you'll know, did the Jefferson Market Library. We did a lot of these urns, a lot of the details. But that's a terrace, actually the fountain at City Hall Park. And, he's, and actually, he found the urns. He did 20 urns that year. They all have a certain color. He was also, he studied them in, in Spain. So the whole intent is to use different colors. The fountain has what's called Gray Wacky, which is a blue stone, with some limestone to be a different color granite. Will those urns be made out of granite? And those are the urns that we placed back on top of these pieces that are filled with concrete today. And actually, back in the 30s, they put in, and actually, even last year, we had a <coughs> cast iron small urn, but the small urn really was not appropriate to the scale of them. Looking at this picture, that height looks a lot higher than. No, the exact urn. same detail that's out there today, from the tread to the riser. Um, the urns are probably 20 inches, 25 inches. No, we'll at the end. One of the, one of the things that I find well, Will there be the public at the end? Yeah. yeah. That's what I said at the beginning. I, I never realized you said. One of the things that I found about the urns in the park is they usually end up being ashtrays. The urns in the park? Yes. Where are the urns in the park today? <coughs> no, there were really no urns. We have these urns. Rather hot. Yeah, these are hot. And we had, it was an urn in the park, but it was a fiberglass urn. It wasn't the appropriate urn. But the ones that you go to Madison Square Park today, they're nicely planted. And they're planted actually with nice Hundreds. So we're going to have a faux, rep uh, a faux yes. park. Yes. A faux park. I do not understand that. We're living in 2000. We're trying to do, Maxine, we're trying to define the edge more attractively. Remove all the turkey wire and elements that don't work, like for instance, the pipe rail, which is being removed throughout all the boroughs of New York City, not just Washington Square Park. But really, Washington Square Park is one of the remaining parts that have a pipe rail on its periphery. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, this actually this time is first, and then you go. Could I come to you? You, if you want, the other viewer, you inquired. Oh, how many years is this going to take the whole project? Um, one year and one year. That makes two? And the arch took eight years, I think. No, the arch took one year. They had a fence around it. It wasn't under the structure. They, 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 they had a fence around right for liability issues. The rosettes were falling and would, would, could kill someone. So the fence around the arch for that purpose only the liabilities. It was not under construction. Okay. So, um, my name is Gary Kahn. I live on Lower Fifth Avenue. Um, George, could could you put up? Uh, I have a medical service dog named Nana. That's kind yeah. of how I'll know. Yeah, and originally I got involved because the rumor had it, incorrect, that the dog runs were either going to be eliminated or combined in the Bocce Ball area. And this was talked on so that you all know the history. This was a very big concern to the dog owners in the area. This was a big concern to people who were dog owners in the area just wanted to have the dogs to look at the puppies. At that time, the information was incorrect. The dog owners, both the little dog owners and the big dogs, are dissatisfied with the dog rents that they have. 
I have a large dog that I look on any Saturday or Sunday or some of the weekdays and the little dog runs. On a sunny day, it's overwhelming sometimes. The idea that little dogs can run in there is absolutely ridiculous. If you're on Saturday or Sunday with your own eyes, I suggest you look and see for yourself. I don't know if George knows, because he knows I've been involved for a while now, or any of you, how many licensed dogs there are in this community. I went to the Commissioner of Health and I filed the Freedom of Information Act, and after a big fight, I got a release of the state secret and how many dogs there were by zip code. I asked them to do it. <laughs> and I, asked, I made a further request for kind of sorting out the weight inside the dog, because I thought, Gee, even the flat dog runs, and you're trying to make the park accessible to lots of different stakeholders, and no one is saying dog will just take over at this point and be rude to anybody else. They're really not. I thought, gee, would be kind of nice to know how many licensed dogs there are. Wait, well, we have to respect yeah. yeah. the so, landmarks here. So, well, our concerns beyond the dog run are. To me, this is a, a park of bohemia, this is a park of openness, this is a park of protest, this is a park of a lot of different qualities. Um, it is very troubling to the groups that I speak for that this or any other kind of fence is going around the, the park. It's a very troubling idea. Uh, draw, point it out, go to the Sheridan Park area and look at the kind of fencing. Yes, it's thinner. I grant you, it's more like a zero, I grant you. But if I look at that little Sherman Square, it still looks like a locked in prison to me. Uh, and that's not what I think of as Washington Square Park. I understand and have great respect for the history of the park, and the history has also changed. Arch came in, didn't exist there, other things. I'm very concerned with the future and with the overall feeling. I think the fence is very troubling. I think the provisions that George has made for dog runs, it's just, it's, it's not meeting the needs remotely. And we've talked about this many times. Dog owners do not try to violate the rules of the park to be rude. The, what troubles us is about the fence is that there are lots of people who work in the creative arts here. They work evening jobs. They finish at 2 in the morning and they would like to walk their dog through the park. Four o'clock in the morning. All kinds of hours. They really do. There's lots. We are no longer a nine to five society, and especially in this neighborhood. I think most people know it. So we're trying, we're pleading with you to understand that. The, the, the idea that so many of us are going to be locked out that's what you wanted can you walk there now if we yes absolutely okay. Okay. and i absolutely yes. do and what what troubles me is that the nine boutique drug dealers <coughs> it's like the cosmetics counters of bloomingdale's then they are in the shine there's a police van i once knocked on it and said you know they buy from i can assure you you will not find any drug dealers in the van you might find them outside they they know us all so well that they say hello to us. You don't like the fence. So, just, just address so, the landmarks. So we're, we're, so, we're, so we're troubled by the yes. fence, by, and particularly the size of the height of the fence. This is a very big issue. George has spoken to the decorativeness, decorativeness and the need to protect shrubbery. I give him, no one's not saying don't protect that. We're saying at least lower the fence height. It's, we think this is a really troubling thing for us because it has the sense of locking out. And, and locking in. And maybe this is not the right forum to talk about the dog run issue, but as community board members elected or appointed by officials representing your neighbors around here, I'm telling you, people are not giving up dogs. We are trying desperately to find a way to talk to the parks to pe department to somehow accommodate the real needs of dog owners, dog lovers, parents, see, that's what I'm trying to say. All right. Okay, thank you. Uh, you and then okay. I just want to do an additional thing. So, um, I just want to put up a phase approach uh, 
I'm one of the things I'm Can Jonathan you Greenberg and I'm the Jonathan Greenberg. I'm a Wall Street resident and a member of I'm the coordinator of the Open Washington Square Park Coalition, which is dedicated to keeping the park open and public funded. Um, the reason I put this up is one of the things that I've had uh, our coalition has it taken issue with with the community board is the fact that there, we, we don't feel that you, the board itself has acted as uh, helpful uh, arbiters in the sense of this process because we're not really seeing what's changing in the park. We're seeing the design that's coming. So I put this up because this is actually the only schematic that tells you what the park looks like now uh, when you show the phase. What will be changed or what will be, you know, this is what it will look like. But what's not really considered is uh, you know what? What are we? What's changing? So for the landmarks commission, I, uh, committee, I thought I'd uh, demonstrate this. These city seating nodes, uh, as well as this quiet seating seating node, and this quiet seating node, as well as this north-south transverse. These all these six areas are going to be uh, eliminated and used for um, for this this sense of an extended lawn and extended garden. That's why we feel one of you know the, the uh, this area, which is uh, currently very wide walkway and a, a large. This is in blue, so it's sort of hard to see. This very large assembly area is going to be also uh, converted to a lawn. And as you can see, if you go to the park today, the lawn is closed. Uh, you know, for instance, right now and, and eight or nine months out of the year. Um, so what that what that does is. The, the way people use the park, we feel, is going to be transformed from the historic uses as a gathering space and an assembly space to a pass-through pedestrian garden, a place that people look at as a place as opposed to people have historically assembled and congregated in. And that's the nature, that's, that's really the nature, musical interlude, of, of a lot of our reflections, is that the, the sense, the feeling, the history of this park is about to change with this redesign. The fences, when you look at them, are different than the feel of being an open Washington Square Park. Uh, the plaza, if you go to Madison Square Park, having a flat plaza uh, that's, that's at one level with the street is different than going into a central assembly area. This is a very large assembly area. Right now, people walk around the center or they will to, to go through the park or they go into the center to gather. To gather. When people gather on a Saturday or Sunday in Washington Square Park, it is one of the most historically unique experiences of Greenwich Village. It is the, the experience that people come to Greenwich Village to see. It's what many of us bring our friends to see when they come from out of town. George feels that will be continued you know, when, with, with the new design. We feel that that, is, that actually is threatened, that that historic usage of the park as a central place to assemble from people all over will be changed by the design. We've had differences about these uh, these seating nodes. I've heard. Uh, Actually, why, would it, I have a question. Yeah. why would it be changed if they're going to have a fountain <coughs> move? Would they still be because moving? well, this because the, the fountain, the area that's around the fountain now. If you count this this area, it's a very large area for people to congregate. And also, it's if people are people will now walk through the center, which they do with, without a sense of an assembly, but to, as a pass through because it's one street level. The Madison Square Park now, very few people gathering. Now, it is true that that fountain is smaller, and it's also true that it's surrounded with a fence. But part of the sense of it is, is that you're not going into a gathering area. Where our big objection is that this becomes a pass-through pedestrian plaza, as opposed to a gathering space. So the reason I'm here tonight before the Landmarks Committee, and what I would like to say to the Landmarks Commission, is that if you look at what is historic about Washington Square Park right now, it is a uniquely multicultural and diverse historic gathering space. It has become, and you know, and I can't, you know, in the 60s and 70s, the people we've spoken to, interesting enough, the VID Executive Committee voted 16 to 3 to oppose this plan and support simply rejuvenating the park, simply fixing what's the here. The VID. The VID, yes. It's in VID's executive district. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but with the his the BID's executive district, it's not the BID's district any longer. The Village Independent Democrat. That's uh, I'm not going to get into who defines the territory where. Fanny oh, Powers. Powers. Um, but but what I, what I am saying is that it's it's historically this is this is what is being we feel is being threatened here. 
that the fact that the park has been used, that you are custodians, guardians in a sense, of the landmark usage. Landmark has a few different senses. One is the aesthetic sensibility. One is the actual program of a park and the way it's been used. And what we're saying here tonight and is that is that his, the historic usage of a gathering space, of a place people hang out in, a place people go to as a destination, is being threatened with a transformation. We see it with the gate. We see it with the sense that areas are going to be gardens that, that people walk through. Go right here, go left here. Gates coming out here. We see it with the sense that the center is going to be one level, not a place to go into. We see the secluded areas that have been you know, the Parks Department has said this is where only homeless people stay. Go there during lunch hour and see Not if that's true. true. Here, 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 and here. <laughs> the secluded walkways, all being eliminated, all for this sense of more green, more grass. I, I think people gather in these spaces. People come to the spaces. And we don't, you know, we as a, you know, someone who's been in this park for 40 years and used it, this is a special gathering space. And, and if you decide to change it to a garden viewing park, you are really potentially threatening, for very little reason, A, the public funding, because as you know, we're going to need the 6.8 million finance, the 16 million the park is going to cost, 6.8 million is there. There could be a private conservancy controlling this park. You're, you're threatening to turn it into a garden park, and you are really you know, calling into question the historic usage for the last 40 years, 50 years, of this park as a gathering space. And, and I think that that, uh, you know, that responsibility is, is a very heavy one. I, we don't see why we need to risk this in order to rejuvenate this park. We think we could rejuvenate without jeopardizing What would you suggest then? I saw, I saw a question. Is, maybe Jordan would answer. You can ask, is the central plaza more or less going to have the same square footage before and after? Should I answer all those questions? No, 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 no. The same way, the same way. There is a slight reduction. The plaza is huge. The plaza is still very large. A small reduction because what we're doing is combining the out of perimeter. A small reduction. Okay, very small. I just want to move on. Yeah. What this area is bigger. What percentage is small? Can you tell me? Probably 5%. 5%? You know this area? This area is reduced. This no, it's not. This is not the center. If you want me to talk about design, we'll talk about design. Should we talk about design? No, no. 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 But it's not yeah. reduced. So okay. you're making assumptions about no. taking out seating and taking out spaces that we created. But you can say what you want to say. <clears throat> okay, so. Well, why don't you answer what he said? Yes, I would love to. Uh, I mean, yeah. okay. what, the, what the plan does, you see, this whole plaza actually is a circle right here for this big space also for gathering. We well, have a large gathering. Actually, even Holly is larger than we have today. We have the double space for gatherings and for seating in these areas for the Holly. What we want to attract those gatherings here, gatherings here, gatherings at the entrance. No one can sit at the entrance. Also, these areas are redefined and redesigned for gatherings at, at every entrance of the park. You have a great space for seating. So you don't need these little intrusions. You you see, really, but everyone seems to work out really well. Right now. Well, 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 you have your time. Well, he's not exactly answering the question. Well, and I want to sir, 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 you're out of order. Wait, he's tough. Just call him. So the whole issue is by removing some of these areas, you create other seating types of geometries in these locations. So realities are you're not, it's not a pass-through park. The exact geometries of the park and the seating and the circulation patterns will still work exactly the same way. The gatherings of the fountain and the submerged steps create the amphitheater. What's great about it is the lawns. We have a larger group. To get a large group of gatherings in the space, you can spill them out on top of these lawns. When you're here on a very sunny day, people sunbathe on these lawns. These lawns are very heavily hot. utilized. Maybe hot for you, but the biggest groups gather in this location and gather in that location. The, uh, the team, team plaza is hardly used. And so having this space would be a great amenity. This would be heavily yeah. used by, by people playing frisbee. These lawns are passive recreation. It's not a viewing garden. These lawns are grass. Okay. So, so people will be allowed to walk on the grass? Yes. yes. The post and chains will allow passive recreation. Sunbathing, frisbee, lying on the grass as they do today. So you can have turkey wire yeah. now. We should all go the plants. Yeah. Oh, oh. 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 Would you call, please? No, who wants to go to so the uh, my, my last, you know, my last, you know, comment is that this is, um, the reason we said that this is a, a change type of plan is the walkways, the ponds, everything is on a path, it's on a walkway here. Right now there are places 
office and their places for assembly. And I, we don't really believe there's a pent up demand for lawns that are going to be fenced three quarters of the year. But there is, we don't yeah. see why. So, so, so we, have have all, we have to be home. Thank you. How do you feel being custodian of our future? Man, well, it's this way. It's I, actually, you, anyone wants to be, I'll just go. Yeah, it's been quick. You don't mind. I just wonder about the turkey wire. You know, like we have turkey wire now, so we're not going to have turkey wire later. Why? Why do we have it now? The problem with it now, and I'll tell you the problem with it now. I work, yes, I use the park every day, and I have to deal with people who use these lawns at night at 1 o'clock in the morning. Yes, the park is broken at night. People do pass the park. It's locked at night. It's broken at night. This dog run is not used at 1 in the morning. They dig into the earth. They run. They slide. They glide. Why they glide? It's, it's torn. Man, you're all aboard. If you want to talk, just leave, okay? You're disturbing everyone else in this room. Yeah. What Sir, you are you in next? Hmm. Yeah, my name is Eric Rosen, and I live over at 9th and Broadway, and I've been living in this neighborhood for 18 years. I'm going to take me like five minutes, because oh. I, 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 I use it. If you want to yeah, go first, two minutes, two minutes no, 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 maybe five minutes, two and a half, if I could. I've been living here for a long time. This is an important change. I, I, think, I think everybody will yeah, have this happens. opportunity. Yeah. First off, yeah, I think it's a very good plan. It has great circulation. It makes a lot of sense, but the big question is do we want change in our community and do we want to change circulation patterns? I'm sure this thing, once it's built, people will utilize it and the various intended purposes that this gentleman over here has described will come to fruition. But my own personal opinion is, is, is from my own perspective, is that the type of change that I want to see in my community? And I think the answer for me personally is that's exactly the type of change I want to see in my community. It's not a question about whether it's a good plan or not or whether it makes sense. I mean, this is a well thought out plan. People have spent thousands upon thousands of hours, I'm sure, figuring it out. That's not the question, to me at least. The question is, do we want to change the character of our, of our neighborhood? The way in which people interact, where you are custodians of landmarking, is not just only from the physical characteristic of this environment, but the way in which people interact exactly. with the environment. Absolutely. It's the same reason that you protect the sidewalks when you were talking about 107 Christopher Street. It's the same reason there was such concern about the aesthetic interaction of the facade and streetscape as people walk by, because you're preserving the way in which people culturally interact in physical space. That may not be the strict definition of your use. That may not be your strict definition of your charter use, sir, but it probably is, is consistent with the reason in which landmarks were first enacted. So my only point is, I think this is a good plan, but do we want change? Okay. I, as a neighbor, don't want this change. Okay, thank you. And now, uh, this, I think you were next. Okay, well done. Okay, my name is Edie Sullivan, and um, I also want to congratulate you for a lot of thought, a lot of heart, a lot of vision, a lot of imagination. But I do have some history facts here, so I would like to tell you that before we make this excessive change. In 1853, you have all your facts, in 1853, and by the way, the, the source of this information is from a book published by John Hopkins University. It's called It Happened on Washington Square. So, and there are five books of it. In 1853, the first fountain was placed exactly at the midpoint of the square's east-west axis, where it has remained since. I'm not going to go, I'm going to give this to you because I think you should have it. Because you may want to come and make some little changes. It might, it might touch you. But, we know but, the history. but I, I want to move up right. the line because we're, we're only in 1850. Right. A lot of the history. So is, yeah, I'm not going to bring up too many facts because I think we all know that. A lot of the facts, the books are not very accurate. We've been working with some of the authors. What's the question? Okay. Yeah, yeah, what's the, the, what's the, the question? The question is. Well, what's your comment? It, excuse me. The question is if the fountain is exactly where it has remained since in the perfect east point axis. And what you're trying to do is to line it up with the... Isn't yeah. that the first thing you want to do? That's so the only thing. address the landmarks application on. regarding the pathways and the fence. Okay. That's where it here tonight. The pathways and the fence please. are the please. result... Of you, please okay, wait a minute. The pathways and the fence are the result of the shifting and the changing of the fountain. The first important thing we have to know is the fountain is the one position that should not change. And that's upsetting because George can't do the park if he can't do the fountain. So I don't know what's going to happen. Okay, thank you very that's much. my take. 
Yeah. Yeah. Bravo. Yeah. I don't have any social questions. I have a question. question. <laughs> what is the material for the sidewalk? Good question. What are um, where are the bocce courts going to be re set, uh, you know, placed? Are there trees going to be removed that are alive and well? Because I understand on my block, you cannot take down a tree until the last leaf is dead, which I find then very extremely um, upsetting to my constituency that I can't get my trees fixed. You can now. At, I cannot, according to uh, anyway, my phone call from last week. Question. I also then want to know, are we going to have a lot of interior fences like we have now? And so therefore, uh, let me see, that was my my biggest question is, what are you doing with the sidewalks? Okay. Are they cobblestone or what? No, they're going to be asphalt pavers on the sidewalks. We're not going to do the blue stone. Uh -huh. It's a harder stone, and joggers love using the periphery of the park, and the asphalt mm -hmm. pavers are softer on your feet. The edge of the park, um, they have a blue stone edge. That's part of phase two. We haven't decided. Well, the the interior edge. The interior of the park would be asphalt pavers with a two foot blue stone paving band with benches sit. The curves in the park would be blue stone, three inch curved blue stone like they are in our historic parks. The line black was the chain. Have you seen Abington Square as posting trains inside the park? Yeah. So you take a look at Abington Square Park or City Hall Park, it's exactly in detail. It's a historic post and change. And the, the trees. The trees, um, there are some trees, about a handful, two or three being removed on the northwestern quadrant. Those trees are in poor condition. Actually, some are dead trees. The tree is declared unsound. I know that you're saying if every leaf is on it, but we are removing our trees now in our parks and actually removed some Union Square um, a few months ago that were unsound and on city streets. If you call the parks department, they will come and remove the tree. But if they're, if they're dangerous, they have to be removed. I have been told no, but yeah, you should do that. George, and the trees around, trees around and the trees around the yes, plaza. We just, just, we just had one removed. Yeah, there are four or five resolutions there. This is awfully important. Why are you rushing the story? Excuse me. Why are you rushing the story? Excuse me. Okay, we're not going to do that. Excuse me. Okay, we're not going to do that. Shut up, you. Don't even do it. Hey, hey, hey. I'm not an executive. What's your name? Drive <laughs> 49 Worcester Street. Okay. How dare you ask? We have a few Man. more questions, sir. The you're media. arrogant. We have a few lady, more lady. questions. Hey, no, no, no. You're no. arrogant. That's supposed to be a chairperson. Excuse me. We you're have outrageous. a few more questions. This is a historical You're outrageous. Sir, come on. Grow up. No, no, you don't no, no, grow up, no, sir. No, are, you're out of order, sir. You're out of order. Sorry. That's you're projection, sir. Sorry. Man, please. She's please. She's not helping your case at all. Oh, you're so, outrageous. You're, not you're an embarrassment. So, there are classrooms adjacent to the air solution screen. I know, really. Yeah. This is a classroom. This is a school. You're trying to change the nature of the neighborhood, and we're not sorry, all you're not helping your cause. You told us to shut up. You told us to shut up, Al. You're interrupting your own. No, you're, you're interrupting your no. neighbors. You shall raise your hand. Let's do 149. I just want to get an answer. George, can we do the park without moving the back? Ma'am, ma'am. Outrageous. That's not a good question. Can we? Ma'am, we're an executive. We're, do, we're doing solo now. We're doing solo. We're going to park. How do you change? Can you change? This Sir, we're in the Will you please respect your neighbors? No, you don't have no respect. You told us to shut up. No respect. You're protecting all over the place. Excuse me, you're not. You're not protecting all over the place. Who are you? What's your name? Go on. One forty-nine. John Sweeney. Get his name. John Sweeney. Sean Sweeney. Sean Sweeney. S E A N S W E E N E Y. S E A N S W E E N E Y. Where did you live? One forty-nine. Mr. Sweeney. You never use the pub. Man, will you please keep? He doesn't use the pub. Man, please. Excuse me, Mr. Sweeney. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. People have come here and sat through many minutes, hours to ask a question that. To, that gets to the heart of the park. Maybe it's not about whether it's bluestone or the final touches on the top of the fence. 
joint but training doesn't live in the neighborhood. But it's beyond being a subcommittee, you're part of this community, you're part of a community board. I understand it's challenging to run a meeting like this, but it's really disrespectful to people who come out in the rain to tell them. To shut up. Here are other women here, I, and I is one question I want to ask. It's just deeply disrespectful to them. We understand you have families to go back to, and we understand this is an important thing, but this is really disrespectful to us. Well, I think it's disrespectful you know. to interrupt the community board meeting as well. Uh, I'm not interrupting that. I'm trying to be very, very easy. I've never seen a meeting like I'm this. I'm trying to be very <laughs> easy. Well, well, welcome to Manhattan! But this I is mean, what it used to I, be. You used to have some energy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do believe. Welcome to New York City. Oh, come on, you're out of order. I do believe there are. You're trying to change this into a suburb. This I is New York. I do believe there are other people here who are very civil who are asking for an opportunity to say something. <laughs> this is un unfathomable. Welcome to New York, Mr. Sweeney. This is a disgrace. Oh. Yeah. This is Greenwich Village. I thought you were nice. Okay. I mean, I don't think I'm being disrespectful. No, no, you were very respectful. I mean, I think people, what they're trying to say, and whether you agree, and you might have a whole different point of view, and that's legitimate, but it gives the appearance of telling people who come out in the rain to say something that they feel deeply personal. That, and this is what's happened in the Parks and Recreation Committee meeting that I attended. And I brought 300 dollars out. Well, forget about this. The dog is from Park Street. It's disrespectful because there is this sense that people are being shut off before they no, have a special. But everyone, but I, but there are people here. Yeah, 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 people here who do. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I, that's right. I, I was going to ask for something about pathways and having to do. With Please keep it for landmarks. Pathways. Uh, uh, okay. Is that okay? That's, well, I don't yeah. know if this part's. But anyway. Um, George is not here anymore. Yeah, I know he left, but. I, I, I've noticed that there are that the lawns being so vast, they're beautiful. But I know that there is a tendency to cut through. Now, I, there are pathways now on the lawns where people cut through, and I'm just wondering about. I, I would have asked him about that mm. if you wanted how, how you avoid that. But one thing I do want to speak to landmarks, and I know generally landmarks is, is referring to physical structures. Um, traditionally. Greenwich Village has been a very open community, and Washington Square Park has been very open. Deborah Glick put it beautifully in her article in The Villager, in, the, in saying that a fence with a gate, a lockable gate, cuts off the community from the park. And I don't care what the other parks are like in the city. Washington Square Park is unique in its openness. I, I know that it sounds silly to say you, you can't landmark a spirit. But historically, that is what Washington Square Park is. It's an open, is an open spirit. And I would just like for the committee to keep that in mind in, in, in reference to the four foot fence. I personally I think I have a problem with the, uh, the fence as well. But anyway, uh, okay. thank you for your comment. <laughs> Albert? <coughs> Are the people who have not have been able to speak aware that they can speak? at the public, public hearing meeting. at the Landmarks Commission, which will right. be next Tuesday. May 9th. Yeah. I mean, we know there's another meeting. We're trying to, we know that you're our neighbors, yeah. so we're trying to make... No, um, we're not all neighbors. And, okay. So, everyone has spoken. <laughs> Any more questions? Andrew. Yeah, uh, I just want to say briefly, I, I know that there's a lot of uh, issues that have been raised in relation to the park. Um, I have a lot of respect for a lot of people who have raised some of those issues. Some I agree with, some I disagree with. Um, in terms of the landmarking issues that the committee faces, I just want to say that you know we've taken a look at it. There's been a lot of changes to the parks over the years, so there isn't a sort of specific exact model to go on to say this is the correct Washington Square Park. Uh, but in terms of the plan that's presented, we don't have any objections, and in fact, we see a lot of opportunities for improvement from the plan that's been put forward. All right, uh, Christabel. Uh, we have some questions about the need for relocating the fountain. It has been in that position ever since there's been a fountain there. And we don't really see why there's a need to change the axis. It was originally an east-west axis on Washington Street, but now they're creating a new axis uh, lining up with Fifth Avenue, which it never did. 
uh, they're very. Can you can George should ask that question because I'm. Curious. Yeah, I, I don't. I was. I, I guess I should have been more forward. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see why he has to do that. What do you mean he needs to do that? Uh, along Washington Street. On Washington Street. Yeah, Chris Bell would like to address. You're raising the point that Crystal Avenue is on one axis. Yeah, Crystal the Avenue is on a different axis. Problem. And the fountain, the fountain is on a yeah. third axis. The fountain. So they were no, actually none of them have ever lined up. Yeah, and which so has a character of its own. George, I, I was trying to ask a question. Why is it really necessary to change the location of the fountain and create an axis through the arch down to the fountain? Which is is something new that has never been there before. Why really do you feel there's a need to do that? Though? Well, the arch we all know came later. Yeah. Fifth Avenue came later. It was yeah. the country to the north. Yes. That yeah, we know. That. So since it's getting a reconstruction, and the, all the pavements and the plaza being recorrect, recorrected, the grading is changing right now. Everything's ramping down, as Jonathan says, one of the details of life. We're making ADA compliant. We're redoing that whole entire plaza. Right. By redoing it, we're ripping all of it up. Actually, right. the um, the um, stone, the great wacky stone is in poor condition, but the fountain actually is settling. If you look on to the right of the fountain, all the brick on foundations are all exposed. So the whole thing is being taken apart, dismantled. And what we want to do is have some type of relationship from the fountain to the arch. So when you're coming down Fifth Avenue, walking down Fifth Avenue, and people who are in the fountain can really feel they're not really enclosed, they feel like they have this great corridor or some connection with the view corridor. And that's the reason, yes. So you mentioned earlier, it was there was never a connection from Thompson Street to the fountain or to the fountain. It was more like that. Well, the Georgia original Atlanta. axis was east-west. East-west was the main on access. Yep. Uh, but it's really just an aesthetic choice of today to right. move it from the historic position. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. I agree. Well, I mean, that's the point that maybe you should reconsider and then perhaps let everything lie on completely separate axes and sure we could find examples in classical <coughs> architecture where very intentionally architects put things at slightly <coughs> off from That is precisely our point. Yeah, yes. but we meet with many design. groups and that issue is a very non-common issue about the axial oh. geometry. But we're, we're a landmark, so does that get it's very landmark. Landmark. We yes. already yes. met with, um, yeah. we met with the community groups, we met with task force groups, we met with Washington Square Association. We're meeting with different yeah. yeah. groups throughout the entire village, yeah. and that is not an issue. Yeah. The yeah. axial guard yeah. line. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 Uh, and that happens to line the way the arch was developed. They did not find it necessary to line the arch. Well, because the arch came in the Fifth Avenue. We have three different things here: the Fifth Avenue, then the Fifth Avenue. Center, then Washington Oh, God. The walls, exactly. The paths on either side of the wall back to center. I mean, oh. I, I don't really see what. <laughs> Doris, we've been working with many people in this community who feel there really isn't an mm -hmm. area for people to sit and watch plantings, some, some formal plantings. That whole area allows oh, tour displays and more garden elements in the park. Actually, City Hall Park is a great example. Most people gather right by the gardens in the, in the corridor. So that's, that's the whole thing. The plantings are in just that one location. I have a question, George. How tall is the fence going to be, including the base? To the top of the um, three foot ten plus six inches to eight foot inches. Three foot ten, four foot two, or so. Altogether, four foot. Four foot two. So, why isn't it a little lower? Why not three foot two? Let's say. Um, to defeat the purpose. The biggest problem now is dogs. So you can just put your dog over a fence and defeat the purpose. A three foot two fence is that high. Okay. I, I don't understand what you just said. Could you please explain? <laughs> So it's four foot two. Okay. I can't reach over a four foot. And actually, foot. every park perimeter fence is four feet or more. Tom, I, I don't understand four. what that it's means. Who so would common. reach over well. the fence? They would have to go over the fence to be with their dog. They could just arch over it or, or, or do something. But they would want to be with the Public measures is one of proof what the particular original iron would be to prove that also. Mm -hmm. So applying the same standards we apply to other applicants, I think that it's, uh, it's, it's certainly uh, perfectly legitimate. It's what we would, would approve. I personally think it's, if it's properly executed, it's, it'll be great. It's consistent with the what George referred to as the original English form of the park. I think 
you would make the design yes. of, of, of a pig of a pig pathway. Of, of pathways. And it's about the elimination of okay, well, you can you're gonna have your chance okay. chance in a second. Um, I kind of like the past the way it was done back in eighteen seventy. It looks like a new jacket. And so the restored I think is fine. Also the there was talk about removing some of the little nineteen seventies not nodules, which I, I don't very few people use them. And it, it, one person stays there and no one else can use it. It seems like you're intruding. So I think I'd, I'd like to see them go myself. On the southeast corner. But the lighting. Oh, we'll have to do the lighting. Well, we're looking at the side. We'll do the window. Yeah. Um, we're talking about the past, though. Yeah, I don't so like the, the gold pass. <laughs> the pass with the wall down in the center. I mean, this is not traditional. So the park was never in the park. There's no no historical precedent for that. For the what? For the wall pass. Each one of the paths going toward the center had a, a flowered thing down the center of it and pass on either side. We never had that in the before. With the original park, they were very narrow. So it was sort of a single lane. Yeah, what, no, what, what Doris is saying is that it's, they're making it wider, but they have to do that because the objections to a decrease in the public space if they go back to the actual, the original land yeah, would have just but, been very but thin. The paths uh, before the, he did his design, had wider paths without a wall down the center. I don't think, I think the wall down the center is disruptive to the path. So it's the idea of from walking to the path and talking to somebody who's going to have a path in the center with flowers. And I mean, the flowers may be great, but I mean, putting flowers on the side of the path, not in the center. Set the flowers in the center? Yeah. Doris is objecting to that some paths such little aisles. Oh, oh. I wonder they're expanded by Thompson. Oh, I see. I mean, it looks like it reminds me of the center. Oh, I see. And I can't stop as they walk through it. I didn't think that would be good. Well, it's going to be a path. So you don't like the flower beds in the paths? No. That's not a good point. The flower beds in the paths are blind. What are you saying, Judy? I like having a ridge between the paths. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the point. Yeah, that's the point.